Well, hello, this is Crafty Sue, and I'm going to show you the basic, what pretty much everybody starts out with from way back when, maybe not now. A lot of people just like to dive into their artwork, and you want to start with a simple shape to start with sketching, so you get a feel for shape, light direction, or directional light, and the shadows, and... The difference in the color that you know that an item is here compared to what you're actually looking at so you have to go outside the box yes I have a red bell pepper on this bench over here and I know it's a red bell pepper but there are other colors incorporated in that red bell pepper and you'll see what I mean so do a still life I suggest for everyone to start out that's never really sketched something round an orange an apple isn't exactly round and neither is a bell pepper but it starts out kind of round so this is with watercolor pencils is what I'm using to do this today and watercolor is is a special kind of medium that you use because the paper has to be a thick paper 140 pound paper is best or it'll say right on the tablet that comes in tablets or sheets It'll say watercolor paper it's because it will absorb the water and then when it dries it'll curl unless you tape it down to a stiff surface I just used a piece of old uh, foam cord board you can use a piece of plywood um, most of the times a quarter inch piece of scrap plywood works perfect so I have my pepper I've got it sitting on that bench I don't need to make that bench that that exact color I can do whatever I want to color wise with that I'll move this out of the way. And to secure your watercolor paper down on the stiff surface you've chosen, whether it's a piece of foam core or a piece of plywood, is use masking tape because it doesn't damage the paper when you peel it off, or painter's tape, which is basically a masking tape. It just comes in different colors. And then you want to have an assortment of sable brushes. They're the ones that have the brown hair or uh, ends to them, um, they allow the watercolor to flow the best. Um, you can use the um, nylon ones, but get the ones that are really soft if you're going to use these. Um, the sable brushes for watercolors are best in the sense that the watercolor rinses out and when you dry them out, you know, you clean them off, they don't get gummed up. Watercolor doesn't gum up in your brushes. so. You don't want to, well, you can use these with oils or acrylics, but you have to make sure you take care of your brushes or you can ruin them the first painting you do by letting the paint dry in them. So I have those. And then I have my watercolor pencils, and I discovered in this set somewhere I've lost four of them. But I don't need the colors that are missing, or I'm going to make do with what I have. And it's kind of like a coloring book. Watercolor pencils are great to learn how to work with watercolor without actually doing watercolor right out of the palette. So, um, if you're going to do what's called a wash, that's where you take a wide brush like this, and you'll, these are brushes that I'm cleaning out. They were kind of stuck with some acrylic paint. You want a clean water source, and you want the dirty water source. You know, the clean one is to wet your brush to put fresh, clean paint on. And this is to clean it out. Some paper towels to dry it off as you go. So with this pepper, you want to do a rough sketch of what you're going to paint with watercolor. Because whatever you draw with on your paper, is it's going to show underneath the watercolor because it's translucent. Translucent see-through. So what I do is an initial pencil sketch like I have here. And then I'll take my eraser and I'll go over it and I'll erase most of it just so that I can see what I've got that I'm going to paint over top of. And it, it removes a lot of that excess pencil drawing portion. So now it's lighter, but the outline of this is going to be a crisp dark color anyway. So that's going to take care of all of that. So, I put the light bulb above here to give you an idea to keep an eye on your direction of the light source because that's what gives the different colors in that red. Even though it's a red pepper, 
there's orange in that pepper, there's yellow, there's the green and white on the stem that's, that's broken off on top. And I just see a little bit of a deep, deep red and then a even a purplish red. So even though it's red and your brain is telling you that's a red pepper, that doesn't mean your pepper is completely solid red. There are other colors that make it red. And the light source brings out all those other colors. So to get started, you also want to keep in mind where is your shadow? Where's where's the shadow from the pepper hitting the light hitting the pepper and the shape of it underneath the pepper? And that's what gives your picture a depth. So we do the shadowing last, and I'm gonna do the pepper first. So we can get all the detail in the pepper first. So I'm gonna take this real deep wine red watercolor pencil and it's like coloring a coloring book so all the parts of that pepper that are real super dark is where I'm going to use this so I'm going to use it over here and here outline it here and then I'll show you how you use your um, it's got a crease here and that's this crease here. So I need to make that a little dark so I can have that stand out. And then we've got darkness and then light. And I'm just kind of doing it to where I can do a dark red wash of the color that's on here. And there's some orange in there. I will incorporate that in there. Now as I come across, this red becomes a little lighter. I got a dark kind of outline for the back and the top. And then this one's a sort of really dark shade. So I'm going to make that my outlining of the back side of this pepper. And the bottom that is going to be in the shadow, that portion. And we're just going to go and do a little bit of an outline, just a thin line of it. Because on the other side where all this light is, it has a, just a sliver of darkness. And then there's this light orangish red color. So we want to make sure that that shows up. So in the meantime, I'm going to, as you can see, it looks like you could draw a line and make a dark shape here, come down. And it's almost like an inverted heart. So I can actually do that with my watercolor pencil on the actual sketch and make it into this inverted kind of heart and come up to the top where the top comes across and now that I've got that portion done I'm going to take a pointed sable brush and I'm going to wet it just a little bit. And I'm just going to trace, like as this, this was a pencil, and I'm going to trace it onto where that watercolor is to make it kind of spread. Now, if it doesn't look dark enough, then I need to find a color that's going to make it a darker shade. And there's this kind of burnt orange red. And I'm going to put it on top of the part that I haven't put water on yet and put it right here in the middle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash it into the lighter red that's on the outline. And I'll show you that. And I'm going to go to the other side because I already know that red's going to be too light. I want it a little on the dark side and then I've got this beautiful orangey red coming in here. So I'm going to fill that in. And the way you do that is you take the, a, the darkest orange that you have and you put it down and you draw over it and darken it with that dark red. And that still will bring that orange out. And I need some of this on top because it's got this little orangey kind of look going on top here. There's a little bit of yellow, and we're just going across and putting some depth into it. And 
and I'm going to show you what I'm doing right here. Because that's a little orange spot there. I've got this crevice here that's got some of that orange in it. And I've got a little bit here along that crease. Just a little, not too much. And then across the back, there's another spot back here where there's got that orange. And I'm even seeing some yellow. So I'm going to take the lighter orange, which has more yellow in it, and I'm actually going to put that across because that's where the light is hitting on the top. So where the light's sitting on the top, you're going to have these lighter spots. And you want those to show up, especially in here next to the stem. Okay. And there's a little bit of bruising here, so I'm going to put that in. And then we're going to take that dark Cabernet color, I call it, and come back up to where this crease is. And kind of show that off. And put that burnt orange on top of this red to give it some more deep color, which is what it needs. And as well over here on the opposite side. And what color do we have going on there? That's another kind of an orangey color up in this top area that I'm seeing. And that's got a little, there's a little bruise mark on here. So it's going to have a little bit different colors to it. It's going to show that off. And then this here. And the top there is going to have, just going to be outlined with that dark, darker uh, red shade. So it's just outlining it because it's mostly hitting, the light is hitting the highlights of it. So it gives it that bumpy look. So I'm going to show you exactly what I'm doing right here in just a second. And that way you can see because there's another crevice on the other side. So as you can can see, hopefully, you can see on top here, the light is hitting where this lighter orange color is, even though it's a red pepper, I know that. And then it's outlined with this dark because those are the crevices that the light isn't hitting directly. And that's what you want to get with your effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my brush again and go to the top and add some water to wash that in. Now the tricky part is getting a really light spot in the midst of all of this dark. And if you put that orange in there in the right spot, you will have that light spot. So right here, if you can see, there's this spot, and that looks pink. It's not even orange. It's not red. You want to say it's white because of the light above, but it's not. It's actually, it's a pinkish color. So we're going to take a little bit of this pink, and we're going to put it there in that little spot. And take a little bit of this yellow to kind of make it pop. And as a matter of fact, in the back, where that orange is, there are spots where it is got a little glow. So we're going to put that little bit of yellow back there. Make that show up. And so now, to lighten that pink up, I've got this kind of a ochre, a yellow ochre. And I'm going to put that on top of that pink. And then I'm going to pull that color away from it. And the way you do that is you have a good wet brush and you get on top of the paint and you pull it down into the rest of the pepper. And come around like this. And the other side has another one of those little, I call it a dimple. <laughs> it's kind of a pinkish dimple. So we're going to put that little spot over there 
Can you see that little dot on top? Well, that's what we're going to put in here, right here. I'm going to put that right in here, and we'll blend that orange into it to make it be a light spot. And pull that in. Some more water. Pull that down. Now, if this turns out where I, I think it's too light of a shade of red, once it's dry, I can go back and put more color into it. So, now the red in this, it's outlining it, is actually got brown in it. Now, everybody's going to go, oh gosh, she's going to put brown in there? Well, this brown is just going to be part of the shadow side of it. So we're going to do that. We're going to put that in there because it actually does have brown in there with that red. And that's what's going to give this its character. And we'll lean into the shadow that's underneath. So we're going to actually draw that up under it. Since I don't have black, I'm using the brown. And even in this little crease that separates into these little parts. And along the top, as you can actually see, that. And it helps to define it better. And you're going to see a difference really quick on this. So every part on this pepper that has a valley or a depth of some kind is going to need a little bit of this brown on top of that red to give it that distinction. Okay, and then we're going to go here so we can kind of give that red, that dark darkness that it needs. And this one actually on the bottom one, this side, you can see there is this shape that shapes to the bottom and makes it have that darkish brown look. So I'm going to put that brown back down there. Clean that out. Take the towel. Get some clean water. And I'm going to go over the brown part. show you exactly how this is coming out. And then we're going to get into the shadow. Now if you want to make a white glowing kind of spot, the way you do that is you just take a paper towel and you sop it up while it's wet and it will pull the color right out. So I'm going to pull this color in. Now, I can do it with this kind of brush, or I can take a wider brush with the sable um, tip. An angled one works really well, by the way, to do that. It's got to be wet. You don't want to use a dry brush technique on watercolor. And you just pull it across, just like this. And do that on the other side. And give it that deep red color. Just like this. We're going to do the stem here in a minute. And so now you're seeing where the light parts of the pepper are and where the dark parts are. So it's a red pepper, but it has all these different areas of light and darkness. So to do the stem, it's a green and a white up there, and so what I'm going to do is just take where the light is hitting the green in the back. It's a lighter green. So I'm going to use this light, bright green on the back side, and then it's also on the front side, but then it gets dark. 
So we're going to take a darker green. So I've got the lighter, I call it spring green, and then a regular dark grass green. And it's going to go on the underside of this stem. It's kind of jaggedy. And there's this little line like that. Actually, I need that light green just one more time. And it sort of outlines it, and then it's sort of whitish looking. A little bit of green flecking here on the edge. So I'm going to take that and that yellow ochre, because you don't want to use you can't, you know, white. I mean, if you have a white one, use white. But this peach colored yellow ochre look is the, that and the very, oh, I do have yellow. Okay, so I'm going to put this yellow in there with it. And when I add the water to it, I'm going to draw the light to the dark side. So the way you do that is I have a smaller uh, sable brush, little, you know, and it can goes flat because this is a small area, and I'm just going to pull it over to that other side. And I had a little bit too much water on there. So when that happens, that's when you grab your paper towel and you just take a corner and soak it up where you don't want it. Okay? So you just soak it up in the center because this has a light center in the stem, as you can kind of see. And it's also light on the tip of it. So I need to get that out there as well. And then I can take the dark green back to the underside because that's where the deepest um, shadow is, is on the underside. Okay? And just on the top. Okay? So now we have the red pepper, and it has its little stem. And the stem, when it was picked, it tore off the outer green layer, so that's why you see the yellow inside. So now we've got that done. We want to go ahead and do the shading of it. And the shadow is just going to be this brown. And um, put it... Now when you look at it, you see that the shadow wraps around the back side of this. So you want to draw that line and bring it around to the front. And this. And it kind of mimics the shape of the pepper. So that's what we're doing, we're mimicking the pepper shape for this is the shadow from the light above and even this dark shadow because of the color of the stool that it's underneath is going to have some yellow in it some really dark dark right by the pepper itself because that's where it's touching and wherever it touches is going to be the darkest Just like this, and then <clears throat> it's just like in a coloring book. You're going to just hold your pencil to the side and just shade it in with this dark brown. Now, if I wanted to do the top of the stool, I would do it with a lighter color. And I might do that just so that you can see the contrast. Okay. So... It's going to be darker on one side than in, than uh, the other. And it comes down because of where the light is. And it actually goes right along the rim of the stool. So this is without the water. Okay, that's the shading. Then I'm going to take that same soft sable angle brush and put a little bit of water in it not a whole lot i don't want it soaking wet like that and i'm going to draw that brown across i'm going to start and that's why the angled brush is great because you can cut right into right next to the pepper without disturbing it and distorting it So if you're just starting out and want to learn some of the basic uh, fundamentals, and fundamentals being shapes and shading and directional light, 
this is the way to do it. Do some still lifes of some fruit, vegetables, whatever you uh, would like to do. So that is how you learn how to maneuver it and get the paint to do what you want it to do. So, underneath the pepper is the darkest part. And then, so now you have the shadow of the pepper from the light source. And once you've gotten that part, then you can fade it out to a lighter shade. So I've got that brown on there. It's still wet. But what I want to do is have a lighter shade for the top to represent the top of the stool. And I'm going to put it just outside that brown. Just like this. And that stool is going to come around behind the pepper. Just like this. And across the front. Now that's going to have shadows as well. So it's going to be darker on the underside of this uh, stool top anyway. And I'm going to come around this way. You want it to kind of stay circular. So. And you can kind of give it the look of grain by putting some brown streaks with it inside, which I've done before, <laughs> and take that dark brown and just kind of put some lines in between, just give it a, a, an illusion of having a, uh, a grain to it, and come around, and go around this way, and put some grain lines in here and they can go into the shadow too so. so it just makes it more complete that way and then you're taking this because it was kind of dirty anyway and go around the top to the outside of the pepper here outside of the shadow part Okay, so this is what I'm doing. I'm going around the pepper with that angle brush and pulling that across so they blend together so I get that tan color. And around to here. And it distorts the shadow just a little bit, which it's that's a good thing. And then this is the rim in the front. Now that's going to be darker because the light is not shining on the front. So I'm doing the yellow port part first. And then I'm going to wait for it to dry a little bit. And then I'll put the brown on top of that. So we're going to do like that. We'll rinse that out. Like this. Take that dark brown watercolor pencil and draw over top of that. It's darker, but it's not a shadow because it's not basically not a shadow. It is half shadowed. I'm not going to do the legs for this. I'm just showing you how to give it the darkest shadow is going to be under the pepper. The other shadowing is on the top of the stool, the stool top, and you can make it have more yellow in it or brown, or however, um, to give this top a little more green, you can throw some spots of brown through it, you know, just little jaggedy lines and get, you know, wet them and define the edge of the stool with the dark brown and get all the way around because it's going to have a crisp edge like this come across the front it's because of the angle that it's looking that's called your perspective 
and the perspective is a little different when you're sitting in front with it kind of tilted. And this is just about finished for this part. Now this could be a plate. It doesn't have to be a stove. So we're going to take some little bit of water and bring that down. Give it that wood look, you know. And just draw that angle across with the point to the thickest line that you've drawn because then that makes it crisp. That's what crispens it is, that pointed angle brush along that. And then you can actually pull up from the bottom, like I'm, what I've done, pull up from the bottom and give it more texture, make it darker. And up on top, I put those little marks in there. Well, that's to give it a more textured look. You can pull that up in there and make it have a wood grainy look. And that, my friends, is a pepper on a stool. And that's where you're using, other than what you actually see, now I, I like to go back and put in the highlights a little bit more. I'll go into the top of here and I'll put that really bright spot that I saw on the one side. On there, there's another one on this side of the pepper. And I'm going to throw that in there down the center of the stem. And the highlights on the, uh, the bumps on the back. And you'll see the difference here. Um, but I have to make sh you have to make sure that you let it dry a little bit to do that. Um, that's the, uh, the time consuming part of working with watercolors, but it's so worth it when you get finished. And a slight bruising. And that gives it some you've got more character in this pepper than, than you know until you actually get in there you're like oh wow there's all these different colors in there so and then once you do the I call it highlighting I don't know what, what is the real terminology for it I'm going to take that same uh, angle brush and draw it down so that it all flows and it's nice and smooth you can see the imperfections and you can see the highlights and the detail, even in that stem. And there's that one. And for defining the edge, I'm going to use, where's the brush that I had earlier? I think it was this one. It's almost like a little liner brush. And I want to take that dark brown one last time around the base of it and up through the crease. And draw that out. It's kind of like the bottom of an apple where you know it's got that funny shape. It's not quite rounded off, but it's there. And if when you're doing your uh, shadow, if you do it as in the, the grain of the wood. Now, this grain of the wood is straight strips, but I prefer the ones that have the, <laughs> the I call it the oak look or the swirl. So I prefer to do it that way. And I'm just going to make this darker in front to match what's in here because the light's hitting the top of that table except for where that pepper is. And we're going to have... A very defined edge on this and that's what you want to see is defi def definition that's the word and so we've got so the bottom part is about the same shade as the shadow above Pretty close. So I'm going to 
going to take this little guy and do across the edges. I'm just going to pull that in. And I can kind of see that it gives that wood grain look to it. And uh, where's the brush that I was using earlier? Get this one. This is another one. This is a little angled brush. It's a little wider. It's a uh, it's an angled cross brush, so you can do like crisscross with it. And so I'm just gonna pull this darkness down and two. Pull the legs down here real quick. Just give them just their edging. And there's that one in the front. And they are not getting a lot of light either. And the ones behind are definitely not getting any light, so they're really going to be dark. Because that gives your depth also. Just make those two really, really dark. Including a little crossbar. Just the top of that one. And go this way. Like this. So these are going to be really super, super, super dark. And the ones in the front, right at the base of it, yes. And then they get a little lighter. Because they're actually being cast a shadow. As you can't see them from where the camera angle is. But I do like this. And... little bit of that yellow in there to give that, you know, that lighter brownish kind of tinge to it. And then the, um, mostly the dark in there, but you want to have highlights. So you got to make some highlights by just having that little bit of a lighter shade of a brownish family, which is the, the yellowish brown or yellow ochre, um, anything like that. And then I'm going to take this guy, and I'm going to pull it out. Pull that right down. Right down that, that leg. I'm going to show you how this works. So you're just taking it, and you're pulling it down. And you can pull it up. If you want to darken it up, just like this. And then this is the crossbar underneath. This is the other one. Let's get more water. And there's the other one that's underneath. Because this is the underside. And this is the one on the outside. like this. And there you have a pepper on a beach. And you know, this here, under, right underneath, is going to be a little bit darker. And, of course, underneath here, this has got to be a lot darker because it's up underneath the bench. So, go fix that. Put that really, really dark brown under there. If I had the black, I'd put the black in there. But the black in there. That must be one of the watercolor pencils that I'm missing is the black one. There we go. And just um, a little bit more. Okay. 
Okay. So now we've got that. And we can go in and fill in underneath if we want to. But that's a bell pepper. It's a basic shape. You can do an apple, an orange. Put it on a plate. You don't have to do the background. Um, it's just a matter of, and I sketched the light bulb here so that this is the light source. And this is why this part of it is lighter than the back, the, uh, back side of it. As a matter of fact, it actually needs to be a bit darker than that. So... overdo it but I do want to give it that that depth more depth into it especially where this top has the little glow on it all right there we go for the crease. And there you have this pepper with a red pepper that's got many colors and it's got highlighting and I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know it's been a little bit long, but sometimes it's, you know, watercolors, watercolor. And uh, get you a close-up look of it. Okay. And uh, this is a beginner's kind of thing for watercolor. Um, you do a rough sketch. You fix the curves. And when you get to something that looks good, you use the paint to finish it off and give it the shadows. Remember your light source, where it's coming from. And uh, if you've actually gotten anything from this video, please do give me a thumbs up, give me a like, uh, share my video, and also try this out, you know, a um, piece of foam core board and some 140-pound uh, watercolor paper, and uh, share the video. Um, you leave me a comment or two. Um, if you want to see something else done with watercolor, please do uh, let me know because I will definitely give it a whirl and show you how to do some things like doing washes. That'll be one of my next videos. Um, washes can make some really great mountain view, seascapes, sandscapes, you name it. And why not subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the newer videos as I come out with them. This has been Crafty Sue and this is No Rules Art. And I just did a pepper on a bench. <laughs> God bless. Come back and visit often.